In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make your own menus for your own awesome game. So, say you've got your own game here, and when you press play, you have an awesome little cube that runs around and lights up the place. Now, you want to have a menu for your game, so players can sort of exit or view instructions or play the game. So, there are two ways to set up a menu. The first one is using two different blend files, so one being the game, the other one being the menu. The menu opens up your game when you press play. The other one is just using scenes, which keeps everything nice and tight in one blend file, but can also possibly lead to uh, sort of some lag, especially when switching between high quality scenes. That both can be done pretty easily, but today I'm going to be showing you how to do the one using scenes. So, first of all, open up your game, go up here, click copy settings, name this menu and if you haven't already change it to game your game scene then we're going to press shift a at a camera press alt r to get rid of the rotation move it up then on the z axis like so press zero you might want to press shift f and scroll out to move it up even further then shift a at a plane press s make it the size of the camera then sx and scale it that way then you can call this background and give it a material this can be anything you want you can press shift a and add a lamp if you think you might need one I don't think I'll need one though because I'm just going to leave it all on shadeless so no back facing then I'm going to go into the texture tab, new texture, image movie, UV and I'm going to open up a random texture from in my downloads so just these bricks will be fine and press 0, tab, U and you can just select unwrap or project from U bounds either of those will work this is, so this is like your game background now move that down press 0 and you might need to press S to scale it back up again then add text press tab and change it to play now you might not sort of like the default font so uh, if you go into the font tab here you can open up any fonts you have if you sort of don't know where your fonts are go into the C drive here under windows and go to fonts and you have heaps. So if you want to have different ones, you can go to websites like Duff Font and click on there. Heaps and heaps and heaps of fonts for pretty much everything. One thing you have to watch out for though is this license thing on the side here. So free for personal use means you can use it for personal use. For commercial use though, you have to make sure it just says free and nothing else. Then you download it and extract out the package and then you can open it up in Blender. So for example I'm going to click open, go to my downloads, I've got a bunch here, then sometimes I have two different folders, just different styles of the text. I'm going to open up this one, there we go, and there's the text sorted out. Then I can press shift D, G, Y, press tab, this one can be exit, oh, and I'm going to make one more, which is going to be the instructions, telling the player how to play the game. So, uh, maybe just how to play. So, there we go. Now we can press Alt-C to change them to mesh, so we can give them colours, make them look pretty. Then I'm going to... oh. Select play from the bottom because it by default has back facing on. Then we're going to give it a new material. First of all, turn back facing off, turn shadeless on, and I'm going to make it green. You can give it a proper texture if you want, like an image texture as well, if you want to. Then something like that. And I'm just going to select how to play from the bottom. Give that also a new material, no back facing, no shadeless, and I'm going to make this yellow. Exit, 
pretty much the same thing. Make sure back facing is off, shade that's on, and this one's going to be red. And you can make sure it's red by turning those down. Now we've done that, we can press Shift A at a plane. First thing we got to do though is move that down a bit and move all our text up a bit. Then we're going to select Exit, call it Exit, and same for how to play, maybe just how to. And for the play button, we can just call it play. Then for our plan underneath, depending on what button it's for, we're going to have to call it that as well. So maybe this one can be exit sensor, which means I'm going to have to move it underneath the exit and scale it to the same as the exit text. So, oh, something like that. That looks fine. Then I'm going to select the exit here, hold down shift, select the exit sensor, and control P. So parent the text to the sensor. So we can animate the sensor and then the text moves as well. Then we're going to press shift D, G, Y. This is going to be how to sensor. You can put the name just in one big block if you'd rather. I'm going to press S, X and get all the text in, get as much of it as you can, sort of like that, just so if the player does hover over it, it's still an option if they click. Then we're going to select how to and parent that to this. And we'll make one more, also from the exit sensor, Shift D, G, Y, and that almost fits perfectly. And we'll just scale it a little bit, and there we go. This one's going to be called play sensor, we're going to parent play to the sensor. Now select all the sensors, make sure they are invisible, and after you've done that, you can also check actor if you want to. Then what we're going to do is, for the first one, Click the exit sensor and we're going to add a little animation down here for when you click on it. We're going to go to frame 0, press I, insert scaling, then we're going to go to frame 3, doesn't need to be that big, and we're going to press S, make it smaller, and I, insert scaling. So we're going to select mouse, left button, and mouse, mouse over. So Join the two up, then we're going to add an action, and it's going to be exit sensor action. So, in frame three, what you might notice is now if you try to sort of test it out and click around, you can't see your mouse at all. It's just disappeared, which is normal. One thing you can do is click down here. Then when you press B, you can see your mouse, and that animation looks awesome. There is a problem, and that is if, say, you do this, and you click play, and it goes into your game, your mouse will still be visible. So we're going to be uh, adding in a Python script after all of this. So check true on the mouse over, and tap on the left button. Then, actually you can turn tap off. Move all of these over to the side over here. I think that looks a bit better which might mean that you might need to press tab and move them over. So press tab and move it over so it fits the text a bit better. Then select the how to play sensor, go to frame 0, press I, insert scaling, go to frame 3, make it smaller, and press I, insert scaling, and do that for the play as well, frame 0 and frame 3 then we're going to add two mouse sensors on both of them left button and mouse over mouse over on true join them up to an and controller and an action this one's going to be play action in frame 3 that one's going to be how to play or how to sensor action in frame 3 as well and 
I'm going to add two mouse. So it says mouse over for the bottom one, true, and we're going to join those all up. Like so. Now, first thing we're going to do is select the bottom sensor here. We're going to click game, join that up to there, quick game. There we go. That's the exit sensor done. Whenever you start the game though, make sure this is on frame zero. It just makes stuff way easier. Next we're going to get the how to play working. So we're going to shift this cursor to center. This one's a bit more complicated. So we're going to add some text. Say to play game use controls. Now you might want to press enter at times as well. There we go. Now simple instructions. That could be that long or it could be an entire paragraph. You just have to see how that goes. Now there are multiple ways of doing this. You can animate it, move all three at once, have it sort of going out where you can't see it and have a nice little animation of the instruction just whizzing in like that. I'm going to keep it simple. Just have the instructions being visible and invisible. First thing we need to do is press Alt C. Then we're going to give it a material as well, but this time we can select the yellow one. Then we're going to click on the text, add two visibility sensors, one visible and one invisible. Then we're going to select the how to play, and we're going to give it a property. Property is going to be called click. It's going to be boolean, and it's going to be true or false. I'm going to add a property and it's going to be when click is equal to true and another one for when click is equal to false. So by default click is equal to false. So we haven't clicked on it yet. So if we haven't clicked on it yet and the, we hover over it and click on it at the same time it's going to do the action and if we hold down shift and select the text we can also join it up to the visible one. It's also going to on the how to sensor it's going to set click to true because we have clicked on it now then when it's true and we click on it oh we can't join up the same one another end sensor when we the click is on true then it's going to be invisible and we'll have to click on it as well also select the text go down here and invisible by default I'm also going to do an action when it's invisible and that's going to be how to sensor and it's going to start at 3 and end at 0. What we also need to do is add one more property and that is going to be for this one and it's going to assign click to false. Minimize that, press P. When we click on it, it sort of gets indented. We have the instructions, click on it again, it goes away. Now for the play button we're going to minimize all that but we're also going to add a scene actuator here and it's going to set scene game so if we press P now and click play there's our game the problem with it is though you have this big mouse cursor in the way that is the menu's fault so we're going to write a really quick little script you can turn this off right here we're going to go into text editor, click new, then we're going to write import rasterizer, then just press enter and rasterizer.showmouse and we're going to select, it's going to be on one, that means that the mouse is on, so this is going to be uh, visible, we can make a new one which is going to be pretty much the same import rasterizer rasterizer dot show mouse and then this time in brackets is going to be zero which means it's off so uh, invis for invisible so select the play button then add an always sensor python join the two up 
This one's going to be for visible because we always want it to be visible on this layer. Then we're going to go to our game, select the camera there, add an always and Python as well. But this time select invisible. So it's always going to be invisible on the, our game, but always visible on the menu. Now if we press P, mouse cursor right there, press play, mouse cursor's gone. Which is pretty awesome. So uh, we can make that go away, join that one up and change it to 3D. Now if we go into our texture view, press 0 to go into camera view, press P, we can exit the game, we can see how to play, or we can play the actual game with the mouse cursor popping up in the menu and the mouse cursor disappearing when we play the game. So that's the end of the tutorial, hope you guys find it helpful. If you got any requests or problems or anything, leave a comment, uh, leave a like if you want to, greatly appreciated, but until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.